Hi today, welcome to Positive Blog TV. So today, um, I'm going to get quickly into this video because there's a lot for me to do today, so I won't take a lot of time on this video today. So guys, let's get into the video quickly. See you guys. <music> So today's video, we are going to dive into Daniel, the book of Daniel, and we are going to be looking at the life of three powerful men of God in that uh, book of Daniel. So guys, with no further delay, let's get into the reading today. So Daniel chapter 3, and we're going to start reading from verse 13. So in verse 13 said, Then Nebuchadnezzar, the, the Nebuchadnezzar in rage and fury gave the command to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying to them, It is true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, nor worship the gold image which I have set up. In verse 15, Now if you are ready, then if you are ready at the time you hear the sound of the horn, flute, herbs, harp, lyre, and prosatory in symphony, with all kinds of music, and you fall down and worship the image which I have made good. But if you do not worship, you shall be cast immediately into the midst of the burning, firing furnace. And who is that God who will deliver you from my hands? Was talking to um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, was telling them. He said, for them to bow down and worship his gods, that is the only way they will, they will be free from his, uh, from his hands. But if they refuse to worship his gods, he said he will immediately throw them into the midst of the burning, uh, firing furnace. And he said to them, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hands? So Nebuchadnezzar was telling Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let me see that God that you think you have, that you are serving, that will come and deliver you out of my hands. So in verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we, we have no need to answer you in this matter. <laughs> guys, are you guys listening to what, the, uh, what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king? They said to him, O, king, o Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. We have no need to answer you in this matter. What does that mean? It means that we do not have time to exchange words with you when it comes to this issue. We stand with what we said. Are you listening to that? Are you seeing the confidence of this mighty man of God? In verse 17, if that, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning, firing furnace, and he will deliver us from your hands, O king. Are you hearing that? The, the Shedra, Meshach, and Abednego were still talking. They said, if that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the, firing, uh, from the burning, uh, firing furnace, and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But, they are still talking in verse 18, But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your gods, nor will we worship the gold image which you have set up. Hallelujah. Are you seeing the gods of this man of God? Are you seeing the gods of this man of God? How they challenge this king? They said to him in that verse 18, They said, even if our God does not deliver us, He said, we will still not serve your gods. He said to him, let it be known to this day that even if our God does not deliver us from your hands, we will still not serve your gods, O king. <laughs> wow, what an amazing response. In verse 19, um, then Nebuchadnezzar was full, so he said, then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face changes towards um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He spoke, so and he commanded, commanded that they hit the furnace seven times more than it. So they should hit it seven times more than they usually hit it. In verse 20, and he twenty men of valor who were in his army. To, to bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. In verse 21, then those, then men, those men were bound in their coats, their trousers, their turbans, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. In verse 22, Therefore, because the king's command, because the king's command was urgent and the and the, and the furnace exceedingly hot, the flame of the, of the fire killed those men who took up Shadrach, Shadrach Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. In verse 24. So they, they cast these people in, in the midst of the uh, burning furnace, okay? And they were bound when they threw them into the burning furnace. So guys, I hope you guys are following the reading. They were bound, they, they bound them completely. Remember what we just read, they bound them in their coats, in their, in their turban and their trousers and other garments that they put on. They were all tied up and threw them into the midst of the burning furnace, like we just read. So follow the reading closely. In verse, um, in verse 23, I read again. And this, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burn of the fire, the burning fire furnace. Then, in the 20, on the 24 verse, said, then King uh, Nebuchadnezzar was astonished, and he rose in a haste, and spoke, saying to his his counselors, and he spoke to his counselors, 
did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. So guys, I hope you are seeing what is happening here. You guys are following this story very closely. See what um, the king said in verse 24. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and he rose in haste and spoke saying to his captains, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said to the king, true, O king. In verse 25, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not. I said, Look, hurt. I, he answered, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth of, and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. He said, the the form of the fourth is like the son of God. So you see the reaction of King Nebuchadnezzar in that verse 24 when we read that. He was shocked what what he saw. And do you people think that that was an accident that the, the king's eyes was open to see that? No, that was not an accident. Actually, I believe that God opened the king's eyes because if you look at the scripture very well, then you will see that the order of his captains, they didn't see what that king sees. It was only the king's eyes that was open to see that, to see the power of God at work. Because I believe why God did that was so that he could show the king and he could tell the king that because you know he was daring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. He was actually daring God, not even Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. When he said to them, let me see that God that will come and deliver you out of my hands. What was he doing? Unknowingly, he was actually daring God. Telling Shadrach, and, uh, Shadrach Meshach, and Abednego, I want to see that God that you think you serve. Let me see that God that will come and deliver you out of my hands. So I, I believe strongly that that was the reason why God opened his eyes for him to see that he alone is one and true living God. Because other of his captains, they didn't see. It was only Nebuchadnezzar that saw a fourth man in the midst of the burning forest. So I hope you guys are following that very closely. God did that intentionally. He wanted the king to know that there is a God that, is a, that, that there is a living God, that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are serving a living God. So that was why he could see the fourth man in the midst of those three mighty men of God. So guys, um, we look at that verse um, 25 again. He said, look, he answered, I see uh, I see a fourth man, a fourth man. I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not heard. And the, and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Only he can see that. Then Nebuchadnezzar uh, went near the mouth of the burning fire furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, servants of the Most High God. <laughs> Are you saying the tone of the king uh, of the king has changed with what the king saw? He said, No, 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 no. These men are truly serving a living God. There's a living God that these men are serving. In verse 26, then Nebuchadnezzar went near in the mouth of the of the burning fire furnace and spoke, saying, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, <laughs> come out. And come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came, came from the midst of the fire. Hallelujah. And look at the next confession of the of the king. Look at what the verse said. King Nebuchadnezzar spoke, saying, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angels and delivered his servants. Who trusted in him? He said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angels to deliver his servants. Who and trusted and frustrated the king's word. Are you seeing that, guys? And they have frustrated the king's word, healing their bodies that they should not that they should not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Hallelujah. In the twenty nine verse, therefore I made a decree that any that any people, nation, or language which speaks anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their and their houses and shall be an ash heap, because there is no other god who can deliver like this. Hallelujah, guys. Are you seeing? what the god of shadrach meshach and abednego has <laughs> has done to um, nebuchadnezzar into a point where nebuchadnezzar confess the power of the mighty god that shadrach meshach and abednego serve he said if anyone even have to speak anything against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego either people either a uh, uh, country either languages meaning whichever tribe whichever tribe in whichever in what language you think you are if anyone is caught speaking any anything against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego he said that person will be caught in pieces not only that person alone but that person and his house will be caught in pieces are you guys hearing that he said because there is no other god that can deliver like this like this god of shadrach meshach and abednego wow nebuchadnezzar confessed that there is no other god that can deliver like the god of shadrach meshach and abednego hallelujah what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve guys i hope you guys have been following the reading so we started reading um Daniel 3, we started reading Daniel 3 from verse 13. We started reading from verse 13 and we just end on the 29 verse. So guys, I hope you really, really learned a lot in that particular scripture that we just read. 
that no matter the situation i know that there's so much pressure especially even we are so blessed that in, in some part of the country where we are you know there's no they, they don't have a lot of prosec prosecution like majority of other countries where christians are being prosecuted day and night you know for serving god for calling the name of jesus a lot of christians around the world in majority of the country are really going through a lot of prosecution in because of the country where they are where they serve all these different things that they don't recognize god they if somebody even mentioned the name of jesus it becomes a problem you know they can go as far as far as stoning the person or even you know prison all those type of prosecution so for a lot of, we pray for people like that we pray for them where they are the country where they are that god will continue to give them comfort god will continue to strengthen them god will continue to keep them safe it is not easy honestly we are really blessed we are really lucky to to live in a country where we can call the name of jesus freely however we want we can we can go on the street and, and share the word of god with people you know without fear of somebody coming to harm us because we we call the name of jesus it's a blessing if you are living in a country like that where you can actually go out and proclaim the name of jesus freely in public you should be thanking god it's a blessing to have that privilege it's a blessing to have that freedom to go out and and talk to people about jesus and to just sing him praises openly without fear or intimidation so it's a privilege and honor and our heart goes out for for anyone who live in such country where in some in, in some country where they, they are hiding to praise god they are hiding you know to talk about god to share the, the, the word of god they are hiding to talk about jesus you know we, we pray for them that god will continue to be their strength god will continue to keep them there that they will not lose their faith because we see what shadrach and uh, shadrach meshach and abednego went through you know where they were in that type of country where you know it was against the 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 the, the, the rule of that place that no other god should be worshipped except the man-made god that was made and put there for people to worship but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused because they knew the God that which they were serving. They know that they were serving a living God, and there's no way that they, they, will, they, will, um, they will turn their back on God just because of, of a king and because of the, 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 the ruler, the, the rule that they put in the country about people not serving their God, coming to worship a God God, a, a God that you, you move with hand. He said it's not possible, you cannot serve. They said they stand, they stand their ground that they, they can't serve such gods, you know. So it's hard. You see what they went through. You see how God delivered them. And God put that, He made that possible so that to teach us today in today's world that there is no other god except our god our god a god of heaven the god that created heaven and earth the god that made all things possible he, all these things like for example bible was given to us for our learning for our learning it was our, for our learning purpose that bible was written for us christians to learn to learn about god to learn about his power to learn about his might to learn about what he is able to do in the life of those that trust and believe in him it was written for our for our learning bible was written for our learning so that we can know the god at which we are serving so you see that these people start, stood their ground and said if we perish we perish but one thing for sure is that we are not going to 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 denounce our god the god that we serve if we perish, if god does not deliver us from this from this um prosecution from this temptation from your hand oh king we choose to die knowing that we, are, we, we, we we die with what we believe that is faith guys and it's not just it's not just um going to church every sunday that gives such a faith such a faith is not just based on you are going to church every sunday you don't have such a faith you know to stand your ground in that type of way by just going to church every sunday you have to you, you have to to really know who you are serving you have it has to be a conviction for you to really know who you serve honestly to really have such a faith. because to be honest with you a lot of us are talking about um, our faith in God, but as your faith in God really has been tested before. Honestly, you really have to sit down and think about that thing. Think about it like when you read scripture like this and see the way this mighty man of God stood their ground. You have to ask yourself a question and like, did your faith as a Christian how for how like for how many years now you have lived? Have your faith ever been tested like that before? Have your faith ever been tested like that before? Have you ever found yourself in a place like that where somebody will say either you denounce your God or you die? Have you ever been in a place like that where your faith is tested like that? You, you need to have a strong faith, as in, you need to really know what you, you really, you really need to know the God that you serve for you to stand your ground in such temptation. You really need to know your God. It is not easy. It is it's not an easy thing for somebody to, do you know what it is? To, to put on a fire. Not even just, but to make the fire even seven times hotter. And they say to you, if you do not denounce your God now, we are going to throw you inside this fire. Do you know what it takes? For such a person to stand in the midst of such temptation, in the midst of such persecution, you stand and say, you know what, rather throw me into that fire than for me to win, uh, denounce my God. Do you know what it takes to, 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 be in, to be in such a place and to come to such faith? Do you know what it takes? Man, when I read things like this, it really gives me, it gives me a deeper understanding that, honestly, to get to know God like that, you need, you really need to, you really need to study, you really need to, you really need to believe in him. You really need to believe in him that in no matter what circumstances you find yourself, he is still God. 
no matter no matter what the, 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 the life circumstances throw at you, you need to know that he is still God. For you to get that type of faith, to stand in a situation like that, man, you really need to know God. You really need to know that no matter what, even if you close your eyes in the dark, the light of God surrounds you, know that he's there with you in that place. It, it is really um, something that I think really deeply about whenever I read something like this. Because a lot of us um, are used to, you know, every day Sunday service we go to church. At most we try our best to read our Bible. We don't even read it at all. We go to church. To be honest, how can we even stand the test of time? Honestly speaking, I'm speaking this right now to myself, even me, myself, because I think about it seriously when I read things like this. Like, how can we stand the test of time? Because we go through a lot of things sometimes. But it's not, it's not even compared to what this these people went through at that time the type of prosecution a lot of people like for now i'm not talking about people in in countries where they are really facing serious prosecution because it's happening even now we are just lucky we are just blessed to be in a country where we can actually really serve god openly without fear like i mentioned earlier there's, there's a lot of people in countries where they cannot boldly go outside in the public and, pro and pronounce and proclaim the, the, the name of jesus you know but even in their in their in their home they are they are whispering the name of jesus because they don't want to say it loud and somebody might pass and hear them so people like that I pray that God will continue to give them the strength and the courage to continue to believe in God, to continue to hold on to God. But it's not an easy journey to go through a prosecution like that without faith, without having to know your relation, without having to know who God really is. You can't, you can't go through it. Honestly speaking, you can't go through it. So, guys, um, I wanted to read that for you guys today. I'm going to jump quickly into another reading today. Hopefully, this one as well will bless you, just as this um, Daniel three as bless you as well so let's jump quickly into the next reading now so the next our next reading is going to be from hebrew so we are going to be reading from hebrew chapter 11 and we are going to start from verse 5 i think we'll read it to the 10 um verse uh, 12 verse there so let's start from verse 5 so hebrew 11 5 said by faith enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because god had take because god had taken him for before he was taken, he had this testimony that he had pleased God. Hallelujah. So guys, you see, if you notice uh, my reading, I always make sure that in the scriptures that I read, even if it's one, two scripture, three scripture, I always try to make it in line with the very first scripture because I want to pass a point, okay? I want to pass uh, a point, a point across. So today I'm talking about the fate of these mighty servants of God in the Bible. I want to talk about their fate. You know, these people, they knew who they were serving. They know the, the kind of God that they were serving. They, know that they, they knew that they were not just serving a God that they go to church every service church, uh, church day, you know. They knew that this God was with them everywhere. They knew that this God was the, a God that never leave their side. They, they had confidence in him and the God that they serve. Okay, for look at the, this, this particular one that we are reading now. This Hebrew 11, we started reading from verse 5. It said, By faith Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found, because God, God had took him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he had pleased God. Hallelujah. How many of us can have such testimony today that we have pleased, you know, we have pleased God? That he pleased God. He had the testimony that he pleased God. How many of us can say that confidently without having to think back and say, am I sure? <laughs> confidently, how many of us can say we please God, you know? He not had that testimony before he but was today, taken. I think you have done enough. Come and rest in heaven. They didn't, this man didn't die. This man just vanished. He just, he just disappeared from the face of the earth. He just filmed. They saw him, they didn't see him again. Just, they, there was no way in the Bible that the Bible tells us, okay, he died, he was buried there. No, he said he was taken. The Bible said Enoch was taken. Enoch didn't, Enoch didn't see death. Enoch, Enoch was taken. Hallelujah. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. When you think about such things, like, wow, how can you really, how, what do you need to do <laughs> to get to that point where God will look at your life like this and just say, you know what, this person does not deserve to die. Let me just take this person straight to heaven. Wow, it's amazing. He had the testimony that before he was taken, that he pleased God. In verse 6, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. Are you guys listening to that? In verse 6, said, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he is, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently, are you here? Are you seeing the statement? Diligently seek him. For those who do what? Who diligently seek God. I'm reading um, New King James translation. So the translation that you will read might not be the same. Like I always said, no matter the translation that you are using, they say exactly the same thing. Okay, they make exactly the same point. So guys, he said that 
God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek after him. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that we just read a few minutes ago? They did what? They diligently seek God. They, they said to King Nebuchadnezzar, they said to him, even if our God does not rescue us out of your hands, diligently seeking God, their situation does not define their belief. It does not change their belief. The circumstances that they found themselves did not change who they, who they see God to be, who they believe God is. Do you see the reason why God showed up for them the way he did? Their circumstances, that prosecution that they were facing did not change their mind for who God is. They didn't second guess if they were actually serving a true God or not. They did not second guess it. They believe who they serve. They believe in the power of the God they serve. They believe in what God can do. And they so believe it so much that they even believe that even if he doesn't even do anything, they still believe him. Wow, God. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. I really pray that even me, that I'm sitting down here reading this word to you guys today, that I will come to a point that I, that I, I, think, I think like that. Honestly, I, I pray that I will come to a point where I think like that. That they, they so believe God that in such a way that they, they believe him in such a completely that they said, even if where we are now, this we are, we are about to be cast into the fire. Even if God does not deliver us out of this fire, we still believe that he is still God. Man, can you believe that? Can you come to that point? Can you get to that place to believe like that? He said he is a rewarder. A rewarder to those that diligently seek after him. Hallelujah. He said in verse 7, By faith, Noah, being divinely warned, of things not yet seen, move with godly fear, prepare and act for the saving of his house and became heir of the righteous of the righteousness which is according to the, according to the faith. According to faith, he said, he said in verse 7 again, I read that again. He said, By faith, Noah, being being divinely warned of things not yet seen, move with godly fear, preparing an act for the saving of his household, by which he commanded the world and became heir of righteousness, which is according to faith. Are you seeing that? When you are walking with divine direction. He said, he, Noah was divinely warned of what, what is to come. It did not yet happen, but God warned Noah of what is to come. So that Noah could prepare his family and prepare what he needed to survive the calamity that was about to fall the world, to before the world. Okay? So he said, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Are you guys listening to this? Things not yet seen, the things that are not yet seen. That was why when Noah was telling people about what God said he's going to do, that he's going to destroy the world, people didn't believe him. Why? Because they, are, they were not seeing those things Noah was talking about. So these things were things that were not yet seen. They were things that are already on the way coming. But because he was not there yet, people didn't believe. I say that to say this, guys. Now, in the world of today, you know, a lot of ministers around the world are talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You can see the example again here. People are, a lot of people don't, do not believe it. A lot of people do not believe it. They are saying, oh, for over more than 200 years ago, they have been talking about the coming of Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus Christ, the coming of Jesus Christ. When is this Jesus Christ ever going to come? Up till now, they are still talking about coming, this coming, this coming. Yet, it's not yet. Do you understand that? That is exactly what happened in Noah's day. You see what the Bible said? It said, by faith, Noah was divinely warned of things not yet seen. Are you seeing that? And moving with godly fear, preparing an act for saving of his household, by which he commanded the world, and became an, he became heir of the salvation which is according to faith. Noah was divinely warned by God. This is what will happen. Prepare your house. And Noah moved with that commandment and started to prepare building an ark. And he was even telling people, preaching to people, so that they can repent, so that they can turn from their evil ways and seek after God. A lot of them were laughing. Look at this mad person. How is he telling us? Do you know how big is the world? Do you know how big is the world? How can you come and tell us that God will just come and destroy the world with water, with rain? Aha! <laughs> Look at this man. But why were they doubting? Because they were not seeing what Noah was telling them. That was why they were doubting. But those things was already on their way. Just because they didn't see, they didn't believe. That's what is happening today. Just because this coming that, you know, the preachers in the olden days, even till today, we are, they are still talking about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming, he's coming. And nobody has been seen. Generation after generation has passed. Nobody has seen it happen. People are not. In fact, a lot of people have even lost track of such a thing completely. They are like, anytime they hear anybody say, they're like, ah, they leave those people. They're not all those people that they are always saying things that they don't even know. You know, so a lot of people do not believe that it will still happen. A lot of people don't believe it. It was the same thing in the Bible days, and it's still the same thing today. If you are smart, you should look at what happened in the Bible and realize that so many people cannot just be saying the same thing. And then this thing will just be a made, a made words, a made Christian religion thing to say. There must be something else be, behind this thing. You know, you have to really look at this thing closely and realize that if it happened before, there's a chance that it can happen again and it will happen again. So um, we continue from the verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he 
would receive as an which he would receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going so you see another man of faith abraham okay we just read about enoch and we just read about we read up we, we saw the the enoch his relationship with god how he was faithful until he didn't, he didn't even have to die god had to take him out of the world alive <laughs> and then we now saw um 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 noah serving god diligently and god divinely warned him about the 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 calamity that was going to before that world at that time so now we are moving to abraham our papa abraham so he said there in verse 8 by faith abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the to the to a place to the place which he which he would receive as an inheritance and he went out not knowing where he was going god called abraham okay and told him go out from your 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 father and your mother's land go out from there and go to a land where which i will show you that is what he's talking about for those of you probably you read it but you didn't really understand god asked abraham to Take his bags, take anything he wants to take, and leave his fatherland. That is what God said to Abraham. God didn't tell Abraham where Abraham was going. Abraham didn't know where he was going. Abraham just obeyed God. God just said to Abraham, pack your pack, off you go. God didn't tell Abraham where he was going. He just tell him go. And Abraham obeyed that boy. Abraham just packed his things and he hid, not knowing where he was going. As you can see, he said, not knowing where he was going. Because he wasn't told where he was going. He just obeyed God. He obeyed what God said. God said, go and he moved. In verse 9, by faith he dwelt in a land of promise as in a, a foreign country, dwelling in tents, with uh, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with, with, with the heirs with him, the same promise. Are you guys listening to this? Please pay, pay close attention. It's a short verse I'm reading, but he says so many. He says a lot of things here. In verse nine, he said, "By faith he went." He said, "Abraham, by faith, he dwelt in a land of promise, as in a foreign land, a foreign country. Sorry, dwelling in tents. Abraham, what do you mean? A foreign country, not his country." He was going to different. Abraham didn't know where he was. God told, remember, he said to him, leave your country and go to a different country. God didn't say which country. He just tell him, go, leave your country, go. And he left his country and he was going. He said he was dwelling in a land of promise as a foreign country, dwelling in tents. Abraham was dwelling in tents. You know, like now people use tents where they go to be camping. They camp with tents when you are going for camping, right? But that was where how Abraham was living. The Bible tells us Abraham was dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him. Yes, the heirs with him of the same promise. Okay, the heirs, uh, Isaac was a child of promise you know he was his heir to all the descendants okay, okay. Said, for he waited for the city which was founded which found which had a foundation whose builder and maker is god hallelujah he said what listen to this in verse 10 he said abraham he said for he waited for the city which which had a foundation whose builder and maker is god abraham was waiting looking for a city whose whose foundation and a builder was do what was god whose builder and maker was god hallelujah in verse 11 he said by faith Sarah also, by faith, Sarah, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bare a child when he when she was past the age because she judged him faithfully who had promised. Hallelujah! By faith, Sarah herself herself also received strength to conceive seed to conceive her child Isaac, and she bare a child when she was past a age. She was past childbearing age. If you read that, read go read it again to understand it. She passed. She, she was not. A woman of age to come and start thinking of okay, bearing children. Sarah was past the child bearing when God promised Abraham and Sarah that they were going to, to have a child. And their child was one Isaac. man and him as good as they were bear were birth as many as the stars of the sky, mm -hmm. as the sun which is by the seashore. It was talking about Abraham descendants, okay? Like I said, Isaac was the was the child of promise that God promised because God said through Isaac, Abraham descendants will be like the stars that you cannot count and the sun. The, like the sun that cannot be numbered okay so that is what god said to them and that was what happened so you know, guys to see how when you put your trust in god to see that he will never fail he will never dis disappoint he will never let you down if you put your trust in god if you believe in him if you trust that no matter the circumstances that you find yourself if you trust that god is able to to, to, to deliver you out of that difficult situation to bring you out of that difficult circumstances he will surely be, uh, be to you according to your faith because he said in his word that they that put their trust in the lord will never suffer shame okay that is what god's word said to us he said if your trust is in god you will never suffer shame although shame might try to come the enemy might try to bring shame your way but he said that that shame will never be what you will suffer okay that is what god's word said to us and that is why we have the confidence in him and i pray that because even me as i'm talking to you today i i have to grow in god's um in my relationship with god i have to grow because when i read like what i just read in um in daniel chapter three when i read all those um, portion of the bible it really hits me like to know where I, where am I with God? To be honest, where am I with God? How is my relationship with God? You know, yes, I have gone through a lot of challenges in life. God always bring me up. God always give me the strength to overcome. God always give me the the, the ability to see that He's there. But when you are looking at the things that these people in the, in the Bible went, what they went through, and they were still standing, believing God, you ask yourself like, 
can I, if I was to be put in such situation, can I really, can I really come out strong? You know, so things like that really gives you, it makes you think back, it makes you really um, question yourself, question the relationship, your relationship with God, and see where you can actually work on, and see how you can actually build your faith strong in God. And when you are looking at the life of Enoch, you are looking at the life of Noah, you are looking at the life of Abraham, you are seeing how this men of God, how they, how their faith in God was, how they were strong in God. In fact, Noah was so much with God that before anything, before God could do anything, God made sure that he revealed that thing to Noah, so Noah could get prepared, so Noah would not be victimized with what he was about to do. God revealed what he was about to do to Noah, so that Noah could get himself prepared ahead of time. That is a man that is a good place to be with God that even before God do anything he will have to come to you and and tell you his plan ha, isn't that amazing isn't that an amazing relationship that you can have with God in such a way before God will do anything God will reveal his plan to you wow that is a place that I honestly desire to be I desire to be in such a place I desire to be in such a place with God whereby if God wants to do anything he will reside will reveal his plan to me and let me know how to get ready I really want to be there. it's an amazing place to be my goodness it's an amazing pl place to be so guys thank you so much for uh, watching thank you so much for listening for all my subscribers I thank you so much guys I thank you so much for subscribing to this channel and if you are a new um watcher please subscribe to my youtube channel i want this message to reach as many people as possible so please help me to share god's word help me to share this message like please guys leave comment when you watch this video i want to see i want to know how you how you receive it how um if there's anything in, that you, you think about the video leave your comment i would like to know what you think about the video what you think about the word i'm sharing leave comment on the comment section when you watch the video it will really encourage me to see how what i can do better in my videos so guys thank you so much for watching god bless you and do have a blessed and a pleasant week prosper this week and do well see you again